Good evening. My name is Bryce Unruh. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 14th inaugural celebration of Tabor College. I also extend greeting to those participating via the live stream. We understand that a number of you needed to remain at home due to COVID. In fact, our program will have a couple adjustments due to the COVID. Tonight, we've gathered to celebrate God and his remarkable favor on our college. I'm a 1991 graduate of Tabor College majoring in mathematics. David and I took many classes together. It's my honor to MC this event as we celebrate David and Karen's arrival to campus. David and Karen are special people. My wife, Liz, and I have personally felt their warmth and caring over the last couple of years as our youngest son moved to California to attend Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. In fact, I can't remember a time when David and Karen were not inviting and welcoming. Well, there might have been one time. <laughs> Back when I was in graduate school and, and, and David was in graduate school at the University of Kansas, came out to Colorado to go backpacking with myself and my, my roommate, Jared Gensel. So we met in Fort Collins and we traveled all throughout Colorado hiking, backpacking, and some adventures that I won't get into here. But it all culminated with David having to meet this girl, and it was Karen. She was at Breckenridge for a family reunion. It must have been the Isaac clan. Yeah. And so we cleaned up, and then David turned to Jared and myself, and, and he said, uh, now get lost. <laughs> so we obliged, got out of the way, I think we went on a, a long bike, long, long bike ride. <laughs> Give him some space. It must have worked. I don't know, I wasn't there. <laughs> it was not long after that that they were married. You guys are a very special, special couple. I can assure you that given my long friendship with the Jansons, that Tabor College is in good hands. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. Jeff Nickel, Chair of the Presidential Search Committee, to the podium for the opening prayer. Let's pray. Most gracious God, we praise you. You are our creator and sustainer. Everything that we are and everything that we have comes from you and exists for you. We praise you for your wisdom and power and faithfulness and grace and generosity. We thank you for Tabor College, for calling Tabor to play an integral part of the story of redemption and restoration that you are telling, and for the many ways you continue to pour out your blessing and favor on this school. We thank you especially today for David and Karen Jansen, for their lives, for their love of you, and for their desire to obediently follow where you lead. I pray that their deepest joy would be found in you, Jesus, that they would treasure you over everything else, and that their leadership and their ministry would flow powerfully from their identity in you. Thank you for the many friends and family of the Jansons that are here tonight. What a gift. In the days and months ahead, would you give each of them just the right words at just the right time to be a powerful community of support for David and Karen? Thank you for the many people who have planned and organized and prepared for this service tonight. We ask your blessing on this gathering. Fill each of us with your spirit that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. I now invite those participating in the greeting litany to the podium.
Dr. Jansen. On behalf of the faculty, it is my honor to welcome you to Tabor College as our 14th president. We are confident that your distinguished service within both the academy and industry will help position Tabor for continued success. Together, with a shared commitment to liberal arts education, we will press forward to achieve even higher standards of excellence as we strengthen our existing curriculum, expand partnerships, and develop new programs to meet the needs of an ever-changing world. It is my pleasure to offer greeting on behalf of the staff of Tabor College. As one in my 23rd year of service, I can assure you, Mr. President, that Tabor College is a place worthy of vesting in both career and calling. Though we sometimes serve in roles that are behind the scenes as staff, we cherish the mission, vision, and value of the college. We look forward to working together and getting to know you and your family. President Jansen, as a student representative to the Board of Directors, it is my honor to welcome you on the behalf of the student body. This campus has afforded me great opportunities to grow spiritually, academically, and athletically. The ability to share with each other and how God has gifted us is a very unique thing to Tabor. We, the students, are looking forward to partnering with you as you implement your vision here at Tabor College. It's National Director of U.S. Conference of Mennonite Brethren Churches. I'm humbled to bring this greeting on behalf of our USMB congregations. Mr. President, we have been praying for the search process and for you expressly since your appointment. Tabor and the Mennonite Brethren have a long and storied history, and our shared values have served us well, and I'm sure they will guide us into the days ahead. I want to add my thanks on behalf of the Board of Directors for each of you attending this evening and celebrating with us. Mr. President, on behalf of the Board of Directors, I too welcome you. We look forward to serving alongside you and with you in your leadership role. This inauguration is our way to honor and anticipate the leadership of Dr. Jansen, but also to honor the heritage of Tabor College and the legacy that has been built by so many strong and faithful leaders that have gone before us. The Lord has prepared us for this strong and vibrant future, and we are so excited for Dr. Jansen and Karen to help lead us into that future. I want to welcome now Kristen Wiebe for a scripture reading. It's an honor to represent the Jansen family with the first scripture reading. We are humbled by the support for David, Karen, and their family in this new journey. David and Karen know that we are praying for you and we are with you. Tonight's first scripture reading is from Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. Would those of you who are able please stand for the reading of God's word. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I would now like to invite our new first lady, 
to the podium to introduce our inaugural speaker tonight. Thank you, Kristen, and good evening to all of you. It is a joy and a privilege to introduce tonight's keynote speaker, Mr. Mike Jordahl. Mike and his wife, Nancy, have been dear friends to David and me for many years. David first met Mike at the University of Kansas in 1991, where Mike was serving as campus directors, director with the Navigators, an international and interdenominational Christian ministry. Mike has had numerous roles with the Navigators over his 40-year career, including campus director at KU, regional leader in the Northeast, the U.S. Collegiate Director, National Director of City Life, U.S. Field Director, Director of Staff Development, and currently Director of Staff Recruiting. Mike is based at the Navigator headquarters in beautiful Glen Erie in Colorado Springs. Mike was instrumental in mentoring David in God's Word as they spent time together in conversation and prayer, as well as memorizing scripture together. He counseled David to seek God's direction through time in the Word and through prayer. One of the key results of this counsel was David's decision to pursue marriage with me. <laughs> Mike and Nancy welcomed us into their home where we learned to know their three sons who are now all married and bringing beautiful grandchildren into the family. Mike was also the friend who picked us up at the airport when we arrived together in Kansas following our honeymoon. I don't really want to know how that hour-long drive was for him. I don't remember very much, but I'm guessing we sat in the back seat while he graciously chauffeured. <laughs> Talk about sacrificial love. Mike is passionate about empowering men and women in all walks of life to live intentional and missional lives that are rooted in having a vibrant relationship with God. David and I have seen Mike live out this love for people, especially college-aged young adults. We've been blessed by his desire to share God's love in clear and passionate ways, even with our own children. He has a beautiful habit of loving well the person with whom he is spending time. He listens, asks great questions, and helps others recognize their need for Jesus with much care and compassion. Mike, we look forward to hearing the words that God has given you to share with us this evening. Thank you. Well, David, Mr. President, wow. And Karen, and Tabor College board members, Tabor faculty, students, staff, Mennonite Brethren Conference members, Hillsboro residents, Tabor College presidents. I am so honored to be with you this evening. What a wonderful occasion. I, and I'm even more honored to be able to address you and share some things with you, David and Karen. So I want to let all of you know that you chose very wisely when you selected David Jansen to be leading you and when the Lord led you to choose him to be the 14th president of Tabor College. As Karen mentioned, David and I became friends uh, 30 and a half years ago uh, when he began his graduate work at the University of Kansas. And some of you may know Kevin Friesen, who's here this evening. Kevin introduced us and Kevin preceded David there in, in our friendship and, and helped us connect with each other. David, as I've been reflecting and preparing for these few days, the Lord has been so faithful to us these 30 years. I'm so grateful for his faithfulness and love for you and for me. It's a privilege to journey together. Well, during uh, David's time at KU, I, I started out mentoring David and discipling him, and eventually we just related to each other's friends and brothers in Christ. And, I want to share a few stories about David that some of you might not know. Um, one, one thing about David is I observed very early that he has a soft heart for the Lord and a soft heart for people. 
After a while, I learned he also had a soft heart for a young lady named Karen. More than once, when David and I would meet together and we'd review verses, we'd share the word with each other, we'd talk about our lives, and we'd pray together, I'd look up and I'd see tears coming to David's eyes. Out of gratitude for things that the Lord had been doing for him and showing him and teaching him. It was easy to see early on that this man, David Jansen, has a soft heart for the Lord. And he will serve you well, I believe, because he... David, you have a soft heart for the Lord. I respect your heart for him. David also ha has a soft heart for people. Uh, we were in a Bible study together of, God, of a very interesting group of men. And I remember the time when one of the guys didn't show up. And we asked, oh, where is so-and-so? I won't tell you his name because he's from this part of the state and some of you may know him. But uh, one, one of the guys said, oh, he got married this afternoon. I was in shock, like today, like who did it? Like, oh, the just, really? And honestly, I was a little angry. Just, oh, this probably wasn't a good thing. But David was so gracious, and David said, well, he probably had some good reasons, and there's probably a story. And that calmed me down a bit, thank you, David. And it was evidence of David's soft heart for people. He didn't rush to judge, like I was, he wasn't being snarky. He was uh, believing the best and trying to help set the stage so we could love our friend forward, which probably wasn't a very good life choice that he made at the moment. But David didn't rush to judgment. David, thank you for your soft heart for people as well as for the Lord. David Jansen will serve you well because he has a soft heart for people. That includes a soft heart for all of you. One more thing about David, he is probably the smartest person you know. Yeah, he's definitely the smartest person I know. Now, because he's also humble, I told, it, I told his kids that when I said that, he'd be going. Did you do that? <laughs> huh? Do I know him? Yes. You know, uh, 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 uh. But it's true. So let, here's a story. I remember at you know, the start of when men are meeting for study, and these are all you know, young men, and we're, it's near the end of a term, and we're talking about how life is going. And one of the guys, we ask him, well, how did your big test go? And I'm not kidding. He says, praise God, I got a D. <laughs> oh. Well, he explained that that means I can pass the class and maybe I can graduate. I said, oh, okay. Praise God. Praise God for a D. Some of you professors know about students that praise God for Ds. <laughs> then we went to David, who also had a really big project and a really big test. And we said, David, and David was more sullen than Norma, kind of looking down. David, how did your, your big project and test go? He shakes his head and says, I got a B. <laughs> to which I say, well, he got a D. Isn't a B pretty good? David goes, I've never had a B. <laughs> now, I don't know if he never had a B like from first grade or like from, you know, here, but at the moment, he'd never had a B. Uh, I, I, in David's wisdom, he said, this kind of puts it all in perspective, doesn't it? And it did. You remember that moment, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, friends, one more reason that David Jansen will serve you well as your president is because of, because of his humble, spirit-controlled intelligence. Well, David, I want to remind you of the beautiful truths that Kristen read. One of the verses says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. David, your superior intellect, your years of experience, your soft heart for others and for the Lord, none of it's enough. You need to be strengthened for this huge role by the Holy Spirit living inside you, ruling inside of you. And you know this. In the, the epistle to the Ephesians, Paul goes on and, and Christian read to us, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This passage reminds me of a time 
I, when we lived in New England, and I'm praying with my youngest son, Peter, and it was, it was my habit, I prayed, I said, Peter, uh, let's pray, and I said, and Lord, I pray again, would you help Peter to love you? And I heard a little whimper, and I looked down at Peter, and he said, Daddy, I'm trying to love Jesus. I just don't know how. Peter's five at the time. Well, I had a bit of a revelation at that moment. As I wiped off his tears, I said, Peter, I'm not going to pray anymore that you would love Jesus. Instead, I'm going to start praying that you would know how much he loves you. And as you realize how much he loves you, God will help you love him back. So let's, let's just leave that alone. And from then on, for all my sons, I don't think I prayed that God would help them love him, help them love him. But I did pray that they would know how much he loved them. David, as you step into this role, the Lord loves you. He is for you. He's thrilled with you, not because of what you do, not because of what you refrain from doing, but because that's the way he is. May his love fill you and empower you. David and friends here, uh, I pray that for all of us, we would not be praying, and I hope for all of us, we would not be praying that we would be able to love him and squeeze it out, but that we would know how much he loves us and that we would have the grace to love him back. He'll help us with this. Mr. President, I also want to remind you of Tabor's mission. I did some research. Preparing people for a life of learning, work, and service for Christ in his kingdom. I love it. It goes hand in hand with something that I've been reading as, as I studied uh, about the, uh, your uh, conference. And here's one of your three core commitments. Did you know that the USMB has a commitment to intentional discipleship? There's just three commitments, and one of them is to intentional discipleship. Wow. This is amazing. It's wonderful. In this context, I want to remind you of Jesus' prayer request in Matthew 9, 35 to 38. You know, if Jesus came to your prayer meeting and you're saying, does anyone have a prayer? Yes, pray for my aunt, pray for my dog, pray for my friend, pray for my son. And Jesus said, I have a prayer request. Do you know what his prayer, prayer request was? There would be an interesting Sunday afternoon study sometime to look at all the prayer requests of Jesus. Well, here's one of them. He said, pray for workers, pray for laborers. Here's the passage. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, and the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest. Some translations say, pray therefore the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. David, Jesus' prayer request goes right hand in hand with Tabor's mission, and you know this. I want to remind you that this world does not need any more nice, shallow Christians. Nor do we need any deep or shallow, nasty Christians. We don't want any of those. What we do need is answers to Jesus' prayer request. Laborers workers. The word in Greek, and some of you could probably teach this, it's the Greek word ergatis, and that word actually means common, everyday field hands. It's beautiful. Jesus said, pray for some common, everyday, ordinary people. Who would do what? Who would do what he described earlier in the passage? Who would pick fruit? Who would shepherd sheep? Everyday people who have the skill and the passion to help other people come to faith, picking fruit, and to help people new or young in their faith become established, help them become, shepherd them along. I'm so glad for the people that helped me get established in my faith and help me grow. You know, what Jesus highlighted was two problems, shepherdless sheep and fruit that needs to be picked. And one solution, laborers, workers. I love that workers, ergates, laborers, everyday, common, ordinary followers of Jesus. Now, don't be offended. 
I know all of you are very special. But when I look out at you, I see people who qualify. Common, everyday, ordinary people. And the students at Tabor are the same. Common, everyday, ordinary people. Here's an interesting thing. Who became the answer to Jesus' prayer request? The disciples did. The people that he asked to pray. So here's a hint. Don't pray for workers. Don't pray for laborers unless you're willing to become the answer to your prayer. Here's some advice. Again, don't pray that prayer unless you want it to be true in your own life. David, my prayer is that under your leadership, Tabor would raise up and send out many answers to Jesus' prayer request. I'm going to read exactly what I wrote here. Many, many, many everyday, ordinary people. Artists, business people, scientists, musicians, professors, politicians, mathematicians, physicians, and more, who will experience how much Jesus loves them and who will love him back and live out being the disciples, the followers that Jesus wants. The Urgates, people that he can use wherever they live, work, study, and play. May this be true in your entire years, decades perhaps, of leading this institution. Graduates from Tabor, who along with a passion for excellence in their careers, have a fire in their hearts for Jesus and for the things that he wants. A love for the people around them and who actively pursue becoming the answer to that prayer request. David, I'm thrilled for you and for your family and for Tabor. I, I believe the Lord has brought you to this day for such a time as this on purpose. I pray he'll give you all the grace you need to daily rest in his love and then love him back and wisely lead these people in this wonderful college into the future that God has for them and for you. Thanks so much for giving me the opportunity to encourage you and address you this evening. May God bless you, my friend. May he make you a blessing for many years to come at this place. And I say all this in Jesus' name to you. Thank you. And now, I believe the choir is going to come. Thank you, Mike, for that encouraging word and that challenge to be workers in God's harvest field. It's my pleasure to welcome the Tabor, Tabor College Concert Choir to the stage to perform a commissioned anthem arranged by Dr. Christopher Teichler, Associate Professor of Music. The choir is conducted by Dr. Greg Zilke, Director of Choral Activities. Choir. Which chooses right. 
A highlight of the evening for me is to welcome to the stage three of the living past presidents of Tabor College. So Presidents Jansen, Nickel, and Glanzer, please come to the podium. Someone has said that when you see a turtle on a fence post, you know it didn't get there by itself. <laughs> President Jansen, each of us here who have served in this role were aware that we were standing on the shoulders of those who went before us. What is most interesting is that all of the former presidents who are still living, all of them came from humble, out-of-the-way places. President Vernon Jansen grew up on a farm 10 miles north of Enid, close to a place called Kremlin. President Balzer grew up in Hooker, Oklahoma. President Brandt was born in Canada. His father was a small business owner and then pastor of a very small EMB church in Mountain Lake, Minnesota. President Nickel grew up again in Hooker, Oklahoma. Tabor and that town have something I don't know what. And I grew up on a farm in South Dakota, Address Alexandria, School Emory, and a Huttrich Church in the country near Bridgewater. What we all have in common is that we come from places that most people have not heard of, and all are very small, insignificant places and very humble places. And all of our parents were hardworking, salt of the earth people and many of them, an advanced degree was only a dream, maybe not even that. It seems that God has an affinity for those kinds of places. When he sent his own son to earth, he had him grow up in a town called Nazareth. And the saying back then was, can anything good come from Nazareth? It seems God loves to call people from insignificant, humble places and invite them to participate with his grand mission in this world. President Jansen, this is true of all of your predecessors. We all came from insignificant, out-of-the-way 
places. We all came here using the skills and strengths and abilities to further the mission of Tabor College, which is part of the grand mission of God's mission in the world. I am not sure that any of us understand the call of God. We are just asked to respond and to follow. And we all did. And that is true of you as well, Mr. President. Although the Board of Directors of Tabor College has appointed you as president of the college, the Lord is the one who has called you to this role of service. Thank you for responding to his call. A few weeks ago, I saw a picture with a note on it that said this, until it's my turn, I will clap for others. It's really that simple. If I may paraphrase that, all of your predecessors have had their turn. Now we are clapping for you as you lead Tabor. In just a few moments, I will transfer this presidential medallion to you, signifying God's call in your life and the Board of Directors appointing you as president of Tabor College. I guarantee you that you will feel the weight of the responsibility, literally and figuratively. As you lead, I ask you to remember these two verses. Isaiah 30, 21, whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And Proverbs 16, 9, in their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Blessings on both of you as you lead. President uh, Balzer, former President Balzer and his wife Alice were not able to be here this evening, but he did want to share a prayer with you, which he has written, and I want to pray on his behalf. Almighty God, creator of our incredible universe and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our teacher, leader, the provider of your word, the hope of our lives. We thank you, Lord, as we walk in hope and conf confidence to bring the light of Christ to the world. Thank you for Tabor College and its tremendous impact on so many lives. Thank you for inspiring those leaders who, with hope, envisioned Tabor College many years ago. Thank you for the administrators, faculty, and staff who, in hope, have given their, their gifts and talent to make Tabor a place of hope. For students who have lived and studied here and been inspired by hope and by the lives of Christ followers they have observed in this community. Thank you for dedicated board members who have over the years given their time and resources in the hope that your word, in the hope of your word, in, indeed brings hope to all of us who are influenced by Tabor College. Thank you for each of the leaders who have led in godly ways that inspire hope. May God continue to bring the hope through Jesus Christ now with the leader of Dr. David Jansen, who has committed his life, his time and talents and family to the future of Tabor College. Knowing that David's hope is in Christ, we pray that this will be a time of continuing that witness of hope for Tabor, the community, our state, and indeed the world, which are all in need of hope. President David Brandt was not able to be attend tonight due to flight delays. And so he wrote the following prayer that I will offer on his behalf. Dear gracious Lord, our Father in heaven, thank you for allowing us to come to you with our prayers and to know that you hear us. We are grateful for your grace that is truly amazing. Tonight we, your people, are gathered at Tabor College for a special occasion. Thank you for being present. We are not only welcome you, but we are committed to keep Jesus central in our celebration. This is an evening of looking forward to as your servant David Jansen formally assumes leadership at Tabor College, a place this crowd loves and cares for. We know that presidential leadership experiences wonderful highs, but also more than just a few lows. So we pray for our president, David Jansen. My prayer is that President Jansen will hear your voice clearly and recognize it. There are times when your voice comes as a surprise, like when Moses heard of the voice of a burning bush that didn't burn up. 
when Paul lost his eyesight on the way to Damascus and when God used cousin Mordecai to tell Esther she needed to risk her life for the sake of her people. All of them recognized who was talking and the message they received were not what they wanted to hear. But all three followed your voice, sometimes against the surrounding culture and the advice of family and close colleagues. In the same way, we present with our president to give him courage to follow your voice, enable him to listen well to all voices and to discern right from wrong and good from not so good. I pray that you will give President Jansen the ability to articulate clearly and forcefully the mission of Tabor College and that we who celebrate this evening will support that mission for the sake of your church and the world. We live in times that are difficult for Christian Christ-centered higher education. Our very appropriateness is being challenged by many highly regarded educators and politicians. As those wars will be fought by accrediting agencies and governmental bodies, give our president great wisdom, strength, and courage to lead Tabor in paths of righteousness. My prayer for all of the rest of us is that we will support this institution with much prayer and money to enable Tabor to be one of those places that will be a strong part of your kingdom on earth. Our Father blessed Tabor College, President David Jansen. May he find great joy in the Tabor community. Give him joy to engage meaningfully with the faculty and staff, to share their ideas of interest and expertise, and to discover their deep commitment to Tabor. I pray that he will quickly learn about the wonderful Tabor supporting constituency with the breadth and quality of their experience, expertise, and love for Tabor College. I pray the Hillsborough community will become his friend and support. And please, dear Lord, help him to enjoy the sheer fun of hanging out with students. In your name, amen. I'd like to offer the following prayer as well. Loving God, on this day we meet in a spirit of celebration and dedication. Celebration of your servant David Jansen's acceptance of the invitation to serve you in this meaningful way. The task to which he is called is central to the building of your kingdom, which we describe as preparing, we describe our mission as preparing people for a life of learning, work, and service for Christ and his kingdom. The task to which he is called is one requiring both faith and action. Indeed, James writes that faith without deeds or faith without action is dead. As David assumes this reign, the reins of leadership, we know that he believes fully that you have led him to this place for this time. So give him the vision for how he may use the faculty and staff in a way that unleashes the potential for action that comes from faith and vision. And as he meets with alumni and friends, sharing the vision of Tabor College, may they too spring into action to give freely of themselves and their resources to further the work of Tabor College. The demands of his position will require not only action, but wisdom for how to balance the demands of his work, but also the needs for a healthy family life and emotional health. Thank you for your promise to meet all of his needs, knowing that you never call us to that for which we have not been prepared. Our confidence in the path forward is strong because of your faithfulness in meeting our needs. Over the course of, one, of the last 123 years, of our institutional life. May we all act with confidence and resolve as we walk forward with you and with each other. President Jansen, would you please join us for the passing of the medallion? Ladies and gentlemen, this medallion has been passed from president to president for many years. Having received it in 1999, I can attest to the weight it carries, both literal and symbolic, it also offers a sense of energy that helps navigate the inevitable challenges of this often, office. President Glancer will now present the medallion and ceremony will conclude the succession of office, followed by President Vernon Jansen's reading of scripture and introducing our new president. Tonight's second scripture reading 
is from Psalm chapter 19, verses 7 through 14. Would those who are able please stand for the reading of God's word? The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. You may be seated. What a privilege to introduce Dr. David Jansen as one who was a freshman student at Tabor the last year I was serving as president. His grandfather, Dan Jansen, was my dad's brother. And thus, his father, Roger Jansen, was my first cousin. David's grandfather, my dad's brother, was a graduate of Tabor College, and so was his son, Roger. Then comes David, and he graduates from Tabor, as well as his son, Alex. That's four generations of graduates. I have kept track of David throughout his career, not only as a noted scholar, as an instructor, as an entrepreneur, but as devoted to his family and above all else, as a faithful follower of Christ, making him known and serving him in the church. I'm pleased to see him called by our Lord to serve our Lord as Tabor president. I invite you to come up, David, and give us your response. Thank you. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. These familiar words from the doxology capture why we're here tonight. To give praise to God for what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do through the people and community of Tabor College. I have a lot of thank yous to give. I'm incredibly humbled. And I'm so grateful for all of you, for your presence here tonight, whether in person or on live stream. Mike, my friend and my mentor, I so appreciate you being here and your words tonight, and your friendship over the years. Bryce, my good friend, I remember that camping trip very well, many aspects of it, and thank you for getting lost. 
so I could get to know my future wife. And thank you for serving us all here tonight as MC. Former Tabor presidents and all of you on the platform committee, thank you so much. Thanks for your part in tonight's service and your powerful impact in my life and in the lives of so many who have passed through Tabor College. Tabor Board and Presidential Selection Committee, chaired by Jeff Nickel and Susan Franz Kozlowski, thank you for your trust in me and for your prayers and support. And to the Inauguration Committee, who worked very hard putting this together and adjusted and adjusted and pivoted and made this all happen, thank you for your hours of planning for this special evening. To all of our distinguished guests, faculty, staff, students, family, and friends, thank you for joining us. I am deeply touched that you are here tonight. You're demonstrating your goodwill, your support, your hope, your love for me, and more importantly, for the entire Tabor College family. I'm deeply moved by the warm, warm welcome that we have received coming to Hillsboro and coming to Tabor College. Thank you. Tonight, my sister Kristen read from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, a prayer that included the line, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. God has done immeasurably more than we asked or imagined. I think when the founders of Tabor College invested their time and resources, I doubt that they could have imagined campus as we know it today, or more importantly, the exponential impact of the many thousands of students who have passed through this college on the prairie and gone throughout the world. I'd like to share the first two paragraphs from the foreword of Tabor's very first yearbook. It was written by Tabor's first president, H.W. Lorenz. I think these words are as true today as they were over a hundred years ago when they were penned. No time of equal length means more to a young man or a young woman than the days spent in college. Here the ideals for life begin to crystallize. Friendships are formed that withstand all vicissitudes of time. The problem of a life vocation presents itself for final settlement. The powers of application and concentration are developed. The outlook on life and life's problems is broadened. The proper relation to God and to our fellow man finds due consideration. Pleasure and sorrow, success and failure, victory and defeat, each of these finds its true interpretation in the classroom, on the athletic field, or by daily contact with classmates and teachers. College days, then, can never be forgotten. They are inefficably engraved on the plates of memory Again and again, they appear above the horizon, irrespective of the pleasantries or the adversities that the future may bring. These memories are ever to give us new inspiration, keep us true to the highest ideals, and urge us on in the course we have chosen and the path that has been mapped out by our God. I think H.W. Lorenz got it. He understood the importance of the college years and the importance of choosing carefully who is speaking into your life in this season. Your teachers and mentors and friends can have tremendous influence as you determine who you are, what you believe, and select a path to pursue. I believe in what God has been doing at Tabor College, and I believe the world desperately needs us to continue to carry out our mission of preparing people for a life of learning, work, and service for Christ and his kingdom. Tabor is unlike the majority of colleges and universities in the world today. Tabor is a place where students learn far more than just the liberal arts and professional and vocational preparation. They learn more than just math and science, reading and writing, analytical thinking, problem solving, and technical skills. At Tabor, students learn and live in a context where the Bible, God's word to us, is integrated in all aspects, from the classroom, to the residence halls, to the athletic field, and the art stage. For 113 years, students have come to Tabor where they learn in community from faculty who know and love God, and they go out into the world not just to make a living, but to make a difference for Christ and his kingdom. Thousands of students have gone from Tabor to become doctors and lawyers and legislators, teachers and social workers, 
pastors and missionaries, accountants and entrepreneurs, artists and engineers. And as they go, it has been Tabor's mission that they go prepared to do far more than just earn a salary and make a living. It is our mission that they go out bringing Jesus Christ to the world, the solution to all our deepest, most vexing problems. I believe it was my sophomore year at Tabor when an English professor whom I had never met called out to me from her office in the library. She had heard that I was interested in math and computer science, but also in Christian ministry. She challenged me to consider whether God might effectively use me in a technical field, in places where a pastor or missionary might never reach. Her words stuck with me, and I did see my interest in computer science carry me to labs and offices and boardrooms and classrooms and campuses and countries that I never imagined I might be carrying the good news of Jesus Christ to engineers and educators and entrepreneurs and even the CEO of a major tech company. This is what the people of Tabor do best. As we equip students with knowledge and skills, we mentor and love and inspire. We strive to teach the truth of God's word and model authentic faith in Jesus Christ. Our prayer is that our students will respond as my dear friend and our former president, Vernon Jansen, read from Psalm 19, that we would love God's word as more precious than gold, and that we would find wisdom through our fear of the Lord, leading us to righteous living. I'm delighted to say that Tabor is not alone in this. I'm very appreciative that Dr. Shirley Hookstra is here. Uh, as president of the Council for Christian Colleges and, Co and Universities. The CCCU includes more, I think it's 180 institutions worldwide of which Tabor is a member. And I'm honored that we have representatives from several other colleges and universities that are part of the CCCU. In a world where thousands of institutions of higher education are either secular or have drifted from their original Christian mission perhaps, the CCCU represents a relatively small group of colleges and, and universities that remain true to biblical Christian higher education. Christian higher education faces many challenges today. At times, it seems, even our own government seems bent on destroying authentic Christian colleges, the very institutions for which our country was founded to be able to found. Legislation and lawsuits threaten to prevent Christian higher education from adhering to the Bible, God's timeless provision of truth and wisdom. But I choose to live by faith and not fear. I have faith that God will continue to provide the three populations required for Tabor to continue on its mission, the employees, the students, and the supporters. First, the employees, the faculty, staff, and administration of Tabor are the people who have answered the call to establish and hold true to the mission of Tabor, to teach and mentor and pour their lives out as an offering to the students who attend here. I trust God to continue to bring to Tabor people who love God, know his word, have a passion to pour into college students, and have the education and skills to teach and serve well. Second are the students. Students are why Tabor exists. I trust God to continue to bring us students who seek a life transforming, academically excellent, globally relevant, and decidedly Christian education. And third are the supporters of Tabor, the donors and board members and advisors and advocates for Tabor. I stand about 50 yards from the foundation of the original Tabor building that burned down in 1918. That very same day of the fire, supporters of Tabor gathered and pledged to raise the funds to rebuild. On that very day, pledges from $1 to $500 were made according to what they could give. We still see our oldest standing building, the ladies' home, now called the Mary J. Regeer Building, in honor of this woman who gave her inheritance and to help build that building and her life's work to serve the students of Tabor College. The MJR, as we affectionately call it, has served its purpose and we are preparing to take it down. We are in the early planning stages for a new building, a business building, an entrepreneurship incubator, an accelerator that we hope to build just north of where these historic buildings stood. I'm excited about a campus-wide emphasis on entrepreneurship that we're exploring and economic development that these might provide both locally and globally. And I'm excited about a general focus on academic excellence in current and a few potential new programs. 
I'm also excited about the students, about a record number of new students this year that has pushed our limits of being able to provide enough beds in residence halls. As we continue to focus on and improve our retention, we, can, we recognize the need for additional residence halls for growth along and with the replacement of the men's quad of residence halls that is nearing the end of its functional life. If you toured our new education commons in the last two days, you may have seen some preliminary architecture floor plans and an elevation for the new residence halls that we were planning. In the same way that God has used people in the past to give of their abundance and of sacrifice, to build buildings and provide scholarships and pray for us and serve, I invite you to rise up for this generation. I invite you to join what God is and will do through the people of Tabor College. May God receive all glory, honor, and praise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. We are honored to walk alongside you as you serve God through your le leadership at Tabor College. Now every significant event at Tabor must include the Tabor College hymn. I'm glad you still do that. Please stand and join Dr. Zilke and the concert choir in singing Redeemed of God. The congregation will sing along with the first and the last stanza of the hymn. The choir will sing the others. Dr. Zilke. This concludes the service. Allow me to offer a word regarding the reception. You are welcome to go directly to the dessert reception to get in line or get in line to offer a very brief greeting to President and Mrs. Jansen. 
After the recessional, please exit the auditorium via the main entrance doors. If you'd like direction, several of our event staff will be there to assist you. Now I would like to invite Mr. Mark Isaac to the podium to offer the closing blessing. Karen and David, it's been almost 30 years since you asked me to officiate your wedding. You've done a great job in following the Lord's leading and trusting him in your own marriage and in raising your children and all that's to come. But now this, we're going to pray this through too. Let's bow our heads. Almighty God, our gracious Heavenly Father, you turn our hearts toward you that we might know you and serve you all of our days and enjoy your presence through all eternity. You meet us here where you made us in the dust of this earth, where you also redeemed us by your Son and filled us with your Holy Spirit to join you in building an eternal kingdom. You know our needs and our limitations, and yet you call us and challenge us to persevere with your provision, your power and guidance, growing our trust and confidence in you and our praise of your glorious name. We have arrived at such a moment of calling today, and we turn towards you, grateful for our redemption and the filling of your spirit, accepting your call and facing our challenges with trust and peace, our mouths already filled with your praise. We stand beside Karen and David in this moment, giving our amen to their yes, trusting as they do with confidence to fulfill in and through them what you desire. Grant them compassion and courage, discernment, discipline, and determination. May they rest in the overflowing peace of you, Christ Jesus. May they relate with an overwhelming passion for you, Christ Jesus, and may they respond always in obedient partnership with you, Christ Jesus. Uphold David as president with your word, your spirit, his wife, and the members of your body. We join our prayers for him with those of his parents, Roger and Edna, and Karen's parents, Menno and Alice, who have prayed and have seen you answer, Lord, make him worthy of his calling, and by your power, bring to fruition his every desire for goodness and, and his deeds prompted by faith for Tabor College, that you might be glorified here. Uphold Karen as his wife and partner, and their children, Alex, June, Simon, and Amber, protect and preserve them, and thank you, Lord, for your healing already in Amber's life. Uphold the board as they guide and guard the mission of this school through the care and feeding of its president. Uphold the faculty, administrators, and staff as they carry out the mission of Tabor College and model its aims and values before each other, the students, and the world. Uphold the students as they grow here and alumni as they leave here toward lives of learning, work, and service for you, Christ Jesus, and your kingdom. For ourselves and for the people, the supporters of the school and its new president, we say with the psalmist, in you, Lord my God, I put my trust. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. We commit ourselves with David and Karen to the future you are bringing about here with hope and joy and trust in you. And now, all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him and the church, and we claim in this college, in Christ Jesus, through all generations, forever and ever, and God's people said, Amen. Amen.